Yo, this hot, this the spot, there it is, pod.com. We're interviewing the best comedians, so tune in quick and get your ears receiving them. We're talking about life and life to stream right to you from the microphone right to your home, dude. Side note, this might get embarrassing, but no, don't sweat, yo, because there it is. Welcome to the There It Is podcast, a comedy podcast for creators of any variety. I'm your host, Jason Farr. Let's do this. If this is your first time listening, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. You can find info about old episodes on thereitispod.com, and you can find old episodes to listen to on iTunes and SoundCloud. They're all there. And if you're a returning listener, thanks so much for coming back. Welcome back. I have some fun news for you, because you might know some of these previous guests that we had on. Uh, The second guest ever of the There It Is podcast, Corey Cavan, is, I believe, working at The Late Show now. He posted about a field piece that he did for them. Uh, They produced uh, that had Ryan Reynolds in it. It's very funny. And Joe Zimmerman, this past Friday was on The Tonight Show. He made his debut doing stand-up on The Tonight Show. It was a really great set. I'll post that later on Twitter and Facebook at There It Is Pod. You can uh, find us online if you haven't already and follow us and like us. But also on Friday, North Coast, the hip-hop improv group that performs in New York, they had their eighth anniversary show. I got to go to it with Justina, and we had a great time. It was a fantastic show. Previous guests who were in that group, Douglas Wittick and Kayla Milady. So a big congrats to them. Also, a big congrats goes out to our buddy Yaden. Aiden Mayery was cast in a Tony Collette dramedy that's going to be on ABC called Unit Zero. And in that pilot, uh, they are she's playing like a CIA agent or, or intern or something. She's She's going to do some fighting, I think. So that's going to be cool. And she's also going to be in Downward Dog coming up on ABC. So uh, check those things out and check those old episodes out. Big congrats to all of our friends here at There It Is Pod. And we have a very fun episode for you right now. It's a very good, thoughtful talk with Jeremy McClellan. He's a stand-up comic out of Charleston, South Carolina. Talks about politics, people with disabilities, religion. We we get into a lot. It's like a two-hour conversation condensed into one hour, and it's a, a really good one. You're going to want to check this out, especially at the end when we talk about him making fun of Rand Paul. <laughs> well, without further ado, here's my chat with Jeremy McClellan. It's great having you on the podcast, man. I've been wanting to do this for a while. Yeah, this is great. And you're in Charleston. You mm-hmm. Are you originally from Charleston? I am. I was born and raised here. And uh, then I moved away to Tennessee and then Chicago mm-hmm. um, uh, in my in my early 20s and then uh, moved back, um, uh, let me see, six years ago. And so I've, I've been here for uh, six more years. So, so I imagine you're doing some comedy in Chicago. Uh, no, this is this is uh, I've been doing comedy for four years. So oh. um so uh, when I was in Chicago, we I I would go to like you know Second City to watch it, like to mm-hmm. you know to see the the improv. But um, I I I did not do stand up until until Charleston. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. So you've become a hometown hero. Cut your teeth there. That's true. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, and the thing that I've noticed about Charleston comics, because I know quite a few, the stand ups there are, are really sharp. And yeah, I, I, I'm not sure what it is, but yeah. Yeah, and uh, and it's I think it's. It's such a savvy crowd there because mm-hmm. you have people coming from all over uh, because it's a big tourist town. Mm-hmm. And I think you have to be good. You have to have that polish to earn the stage time that you get there because there are so many people who mm-hmm. want to be entertained. And I think it does give that sort of extra uh, extra oomph to cutting mm-hmm. your teeth. I mean, you have yeah, it. So. Mike Brocky has it. I mean, that's the thing mm-hmm. I've always noticed about any of the stand-ups I've seen and improvisers in Charleston. Yeah. So uh, you've been doing it four years. 
Mm-hmm. And what made you want to get into it? Because you were a teacher at one point. I right? was. So I was. Um, I worked with people with disabilities. So oh, okay. my, I've, 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 I've had a bunch of jobs uh, related to working with people with with, um, with intellectual disabilities. And the one that I had um, most recently that I left to do comedy full time was it was my job to train. Uh, caregivers mm-hmm. on how to interact and like, you know, uh, how to, um, deescalate people who are in crisis, um, how to treat people with respect, how to, you know, CPR, first aid, those types of things, um, preventing suicide, all those things. So that was my job, um, to teach the caregivers how to do that. And, uh, so, but that was sort of just kind of unrelated to my stand up. I mean, I do have stories in my stand up about people with disabilities, right. but, um, but so there's, I mean, you, you, you draw from your life, but there's, there wasn't mm-hmm. much, uh, interaction for me doing stand up was a, um, I had all these opinions about mm-hmm. the world and all these like really strong things. And I would just try to talk to people about them. And, uh, I was like the, like the really intense guy, mm-hmm. like who, you know, would start arguments about anything and, um, didn't have and was just so invested in them, right? And like, like the world's about to end, and I have to win this argument, and, or it's going to blow up, right? And I had that, I had that kind of thing. And but I had friends like Jason Gross, who who were comics and who were like, you should you should try stand up. Like you're clever, you're funny when you want to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was just try to channel all of that into um, uh, into an art form, yeah. and uh, and it's much more healthy because I have I have a much better you know, much better perspective now about the world. And, uh, I don't take myself so seriously. And, um, uh, yeah, so that's, that's sort of how I got started. And then I, you know, just doing open mics and then I got shows and then, um, I had some, a lot of stuff go viral online, um, mm-hmm. about a year and a half ago started going really viral. And then from that, from that, you know, using social media, connect with people. Um, I was able to quit my job and just b- book stuff and, um, now it's, it's going great. That's awesome. I want to go yeah. back a little bit though, with the skills sure. of your previous jobs where you're training, uh-huh. uh, have those skills come in handy with stand up at all? Uh, of, of course you're talking about things maybe in your day to day life, but yeah. how about has the work that you were doing actually helped you deescalate something on stage or, oh, or help uh, you con- convey yeah things. well i mean like people who get yeah i mean i've i'm i'm good at that when it comes to people being angry with me mm. um and in person um okay. online i don't care if people get mad like if, you know i'll escalate them it's fine <laughs> i'll make i'll make them go from zero to you know whatever um but in person yeah like i mean i um but but maybe it's not because of the job that i'm good at that maybe i'm good at that and then like that works for the job and it worked mm-hmm. for, for stand up. Um, but I think that in general, you know, working with people with disabilities who are very, very different, right. Mm-hmm. They, um, and very misunderstood and it takes some, uh, like extra effort to try to see the world from their perspective. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, to try to, cause you, you, you may have a client who is in crisis who um, can't verbalize it, if you try to see the world from their perspective, you may be able to figure out, like, oh, it's because, like, the laundry detergent is is making their skin itch, mm-hmm. right? And so if you can see the world from their perspective, you, you may be able to, that's just a weird example, but you may be able to figure that out, and then you change the laundry detergent, mm-hmm. and they're fine. And that's, mm-hmm. like, the best feeling ever that, like, you solved it. It's like this Sherlock-type thing when you can... Uh, enter into someone else's world and actually figure it out from the inside. Right. And so that I think has come I've, and I've had to do that my whole life. Cause I don't really understand, like, <laughs> I don't really understand people in general. Like, I mean, I, 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 I and so I've, I've had to try to, uh, see the world from their perspective mm-hmm. and, um, you know, in a very complicated way and just to know what other people are thinking. Mm-hmm. And, um, because of that, uh, like I'm able to, I think, um, enter into situations or cultures or, um, uh, um, you know, you know, any, any sort of thing and sort of figure it out from the inside. And that, and that, that I think helps with comedy, which is, you know, comedy is, is all about the ridiculousness of, of life and of, uh, 
you know, like the mismatch between our ideas about the world and the world as it is and that right. kind of stuff. So, and just learning to break down what someone else means or what this yeah, or that right. means, which I think you use, utilize very well with your political commentary and, and humor. I think that's, I think that's why you've had such success with that. Uh, I do want to ask though, when it comes to de-escalating, have you ever had to de-escalate a heckler who was getting too aggressive? Have yeah, well, skills? yeah, and and you know, c- c- comics have have different uh, have different opinions about what to do with hecklers. Right, and of course, I just ignore it. <laughs> yeah, it, it depends on it depends on the heckler, and it depends on um, whatever. See, I think that um, part of me, I really don't like those YouTube videos of mm-hmm. like comedian destroys heckler. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they're, like they're fun to watch, and like. You're sort of like, yeah, like, cause you, whatever. But I, I think that n- number one, it, it, like people who watch them think that, oh, if I heck a little, it'll add to the show, mm-hmm. right? Mm, They'll get, yeah. you, comedian will destroy me and it'll be so great. And it turns out that like, no, like you're going to make the show worse, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Michael Che had a really funny comment about that year, a few years ago saying that people will, people like that will say like, Oh no, I'm helping the show, and he said it'd be like yeah. uh, someone saying to a firefighter, "Like, hey, I'm starting these fires. I'm giving you work to do." And like the yeah, right, exactly. like, "No, stop." Yeah, right, right, right. But I, I don't think that ignoring them is. I mean, so well, okay. So you want to destroy them, right? That's mm-hmm. that's like well, let me know. My instinct is to is to do that because I'm sort of a punchy person. Mm-hmm. But um, if you do that, then uh, you you may win and you may make the crowd love it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but then, like you know, it sets like a, a tone where like you're an asshole, right? Yeah, yeah. But, and and so even if you win, like I mean, like, like let's say just weird example, but like I destroy a heckler, right? Now, like you know, am, am, ambitious towards him and I insult him and everything, and the crowd cheers and everything, and then I'm all right. So anyway, going back to my story, so you know, right. like. The first job I ever had was working with people with Down syndrome, and uh, and you can't switch right. from that. I you can can't, never. That's why I can't be, do it. Be, 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 like because I think the audience would be expecting me to insult the person with Down syndrome, and I think it sets the tone where like you can't yeah. be a nice person after exactly. destroying a heckler. Exactly. And, so, and all my humor comes from just like innocence. Like, yeah, they have Jason. to be a nice person, right? <laughs> yeah, right. I can't. I can't go to like cussing some dude out to be like right. All right, guys. Well, back to just being the way I normally am. Like, <laughs> yeah. No now, gonna... if you right, if you if you are the type of comic who is really insulty or whatever, you know, like mm-hmm. if you're Bill Burr, exactly then, the it, person who came yeah, to my just, mind. Yeah. Then yeah, like just you know, destroy the heckler. You're the same person. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think ignoring the heckler because like everyone knows that the person's heckling, right? Everyone mm-hmm. knows that, and yeah. so I think if you don't if you don't stop, then uh, it, it makes what you're saying sound scripted. Um, oh, and it, it, it makes like everyone is then aware that you are doing a bit and they're aware that you are um, like that you've pressed play that you're on autopilot now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and of course yeah. we are, we are pressing play. Like we are. <laughs> right. Uh, but it doesn't the whole, you don't want people not to the think whole that. point, but exactly. I mean, a big part of the performance of stand up right. is making it come across like you're just talking. Yeah, like imagine you're doing stand up and then a fire alarm goes off and you you keep doing it. <laughs> like every, it's like yeah, this guy is just uh, is just pressing play. I don't need to be here, right? right. Like the audience is like I don't need to be here for this. It's um, a, it, it 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 separates you from the audience now. They get disconnected with that moment. Yeah, so so I think you need to I think you need to address it and I think you need to get the heckler um you you have to give them some narcissistic supply because like they're there, they think they're helping. Um, they think they are, um, funny. Maybe, maybe mm-hmm. they brought a girl and, uh, like they're, they're Trying seeing to show on, off a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. They're seeing you on stage be funny. Right. Mm-hmm. And so if, if you give them that, if you like, uh, talk to them for a second and laugh at, at what they say and then keep going, I mean, most of the time they stop. Right. And, uh, because you gave them what they wanted and they, they can get laid that night or whatever, you know, like they, they like <laughs> the comedian thought I was funny. Right. You you have to kind of figure out why they're heckling and uh, try to understand that mm-hmm. from their you know from their perspective. Like why are they doing it? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, sometimes they're like drunk and they hate you, right? In, in, in which case, I feel like well, the show is now about them. Like you have to kind of just like 
it's not a good thing that they mm -hmm. were able to hijack the show. Like that's a bad thing. They should feel bad, but it is what happened. Yeah. Um, and you have to just kind of go with it. Cause if you, if you, if you try your hardest to like, keep going back to the joke. Oh like, gosh. It just looks, yeah, no, yeah. it, it looks bad when that happens. Cause then you're like, all right, uh, back to what I was saying. And you're trying to like finish this thought that is so right. past the moment. Mm -hmm. What I hate is when an audience member who, gets sort of torn down because I, I saw this once where a guy who was on a very specific rhythm right. and someone kept like shouting out stuff and he you know was nice the first couple of times but she just got annoying and it was him just within one bit and he just unleashed on her mm -hmm. and everyone's like yeah she was being pretty annoying so they went along with him the audience didn't lose him but right. she left and a friend of hers left uh and the friend was like you know i see comics and you know that's not how you handle a heckler you do this and that and it's like shut up you don't that's funny that, 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 well it's funny that like the person responsible would have an opinion for like mm -hmm. how to handle a heckler <laughs> right like right. well it, it is funny when like because you always think that like oh well the hecklers don't know that right. they're heckling but it's, they think and, they have a role yeah but it's so it's weird to hear someone heckle like i mean i I did see uh, a comic once. I was just trying to open an open mic, and open mics don't matter. But like, you know, uh, someone in the audience, I I heard them. They were like, uh, "I'm gonna heckle this next guy," mm -hmm. and and that was the first time that I ever heard a heckler say the word heckle. Mm -hmm. Like, like, because I don't think that people. It's like it's like a burglar just like being like, yeah, "I'm gonna go burgle some houses tonight." <laughs> like, no one yeah. uses the word that like, or like, no no politician is like. Uh, all right, guys, I'm gonna, it's, it's time to do some oppression. Right, like, <laughs> right. Yeah, no no murderer <laughs> is saying, I am going to commit murder one. Yeah, like, well, son, it's time for some child abuse. Get, go, go, <laughs> right. go get the, right, no one uses yeah. the name of the crime. Right. So that was the first, like, eye-opening thing where I was like, oh, sometimes they know that they're yeah. heckling. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. Very deliberately trying to heckle. Yeah. You, let's uh, transition, because I was just talking uh, about, your ability to be able to break things down and uh, talk about them, particularly politics. And you have a good take on things and you express mm -hmm. those things well online. And there are a couple of aspects I want to talk about the online discussion. One is just about the creation of how yeah. you're coming up with this stuff. You're from what I know of you, you're a very intellectual person. So mm -hmm. you're, you're very right. well read. Um, mm -hmm. That obviously is a big part of, you're being able to create this stuff. But when it comes to you breaking down your thoughts and things that you're seeing, uh, mm -hmm. what are you processing through? What are you going through when you're creating those thoughts? Um, hmm, that's a good question. Like being, being well-read, I think matters, um, in, in the sense of, uh, being able to understand the world. But I, I think that, hmm, I'm trying to think of an example. Well, let's take, let's take, uh, the, like the travel ban. Okay. Right. So, so, uh, Trump decided to ban Trump. Trump really wanted to ban Muslims from, mm -hmm. from like, fr from, from coming into the U S and, uh, hasn't been able to do it because they've, they've, uh, the, like the judges have, have, uh, have, have trashed it down twice. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so the most recent thing is, um, he, he, he can't ban, ban Muslims from, from those countries, but he did decide to ban large electronic devices from this is, this is yesterday. He banned, large electronic devices being used on airplanes from those countries, right? Mm -hmm. So if you are coming from those countries, you, you can't have an iPad, right? You can't use a laptop, right? Um, now, th this is clearly the behavior of someone who is desperate just to like, that's, that's an insane thing to do, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, like there, there's evil things the government does mm -hmm. that are like, you know, messing with people. But then you get into the kind of like... Uh, um, well, we'll make this law and people, the people aren't obeying it. So we'll do this and then we'll do this. And it's this like ridiculous mm -hmm. kind of, um, reaching for like, straws, yeah, reaching for straws. Just like, I'm going to do this and like, okay, well, uh, like, well, we can't ban Muslims. So we're going to ban men, uh, w with the letter M whose names start with the letter M because <laughs> Muhammad is a common name. Right. Like that's like that, that, that's the behavior of like a desperate, like, comical right. Willy Loman Willy Loman type death of a salesman character, like someone who has an idea of themselves. And so to me that is inherently funny. I mean it's right. awful. Right. Like it's inherently funny to see 
uh, someone flail flail around right. and try to um, uh, like try to ha- have an understanding of the world and just try to make that understanding true, no matter what the reality is. Right. right? Um, and so when you see that mismatch between that, I think that's the spark. Um, and I, and, and that's true of, of, of anything. I mean, puns are, you know, people hate them and they love them and like, Mm -hmm. but like the, you know, the basic, like, and, but like puns are just words could mean two things. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we have this construct of language and, um, we, we think that language is stable. Right. And we're like, oh, well, our, our, our words mean things and people, but like, no, like it's very mm-hmm. slippery and words can mean two things. You can, you can miss, uh, you, you can try to say one thing, but you end up saying, you know, another thing. Right. And that, that, that mismatch between reality and, and or your, your, your anticipation of what's going to happen. And then something that doesn't happen right. that I think is just, just inherently funny. Like that's why mm-hmm. people laugh. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, um, like, you know, I am I am well read and I, I I do I'm very you know intellectual and I read a lot but like um, there is I, th- I think the, the more you understand the world mm-hmm. the more you see um, you see the mismatch uh, between uh, how things are and then how people think it's going to go mm-hmm. right um, like and the government is just I mean and I, so I think that comedy is inherently anti authoritarian. Right. Um, like, no, no matter who's in power and no matter what you're trying to do, like comedy is the thing that arises from that, that mismatch between mm-hmm. our desire to make the world the way we want it to and then the world as it actually is. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, like so it's, it's funny when people say that certain, com- like, certain comedians are problematic and whatever. And I'm like, that's good. Right. Like that's the purpose of comedy is right. is, is, is to represent these problems that can't be solved. Mm-hmm. Um are like the things that, that that like resist being solved um and uh so, so so yeah there is this this um so for me at least when i read stories and stuff i'm like this is ridiculous mm-hmm. right and and this is true in my own life like when i when i am behaving a certain way i i realize that like i am behaving in a ridiculous way this makes no sense um this is silly and then that will <laughs> that will become a joke right Right. And and people come to comedy shows to experience that, to um, or people follow my page or whatever to sort of like realize the you know the ridiculousness of of all of all forms of mm. of, of that. And that's that, that's another reason why I get frustrated. I mean, I do I do a lot on politics, mm-hmm. but it's not like I'm I'm aiming at somebody because I want, uh, you know, like because like it's, it's not like I'm making fun of Trump. Uh, Trump's, you know, pathetic, like attempts to establish this, these laws and these controls. I'm not doing that because I really want the Democrats to win next time. Right. Right. You do um, because it's I'm doing it because it's inherently ridiculous. And when the right. Democrats get in charge, they will be inherently ridiculous because it's right. ridiculous to try to, uh, put structures on top of, of these extremely fluid things. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, so that's always a source of frustration. People are like, why don't you, uh, like if you make fun of Hillary, like, Oh, you're pro Trump. And it's like, you're in, you're, you're making it seem like, uh, like comedy is like a team sport. <laughs> well, like, some people treat it that way. They do. They do. There are a lot of, there are a lot of comics who, um, I, I guess they sit down and they're like, I really want to, um, uh, like sway the way people look at everything. And, yeah. Yeah. And it, I mean, I keep reading these, um, these uh things that are like you know like a rundown or like you know interviews with 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 comics that are like uh well what do you think of like politics in the age of trump like can comedy serve a a political uh can comedy affect affect political change right that's what they ask and what they mean is can jokes make someone else win Mm. right Mm -hmm. like that's what they mean um instead of like comedy just being inherently subversive because it celebrates uh the the ridiculousness of life right that um uh like that the structures are are designed to i mean because you you could make laws you can make laws against people um uh falling in love you can anti-miscegenation <laughs> right. laws they have and, all and, and sorts like, of ridiculous you, laws on the, right. the book like people are going to fall in love like you right. can't stop love and you can't 
stop people from collaborating. Uh, you can't mm-hmm. stop people from trading. You, you can try really hard to stop people from going across borders, but they will. Yeah. Um, because humans love doing that. <laughs> and, uh, and any, like all your attempts to try to like, you know, manage that are going to be inherently ridiculous. Yeah. So, the most part, yeah. um, I mean, yeah, murder, I think that we're not, <laughs> we're not, this is not a, a, a case for don't try to have a law against murdering people. <laughs> right. Well, but even like, <laughs> but, even like a law against murder, like, I mean, it's, you should have these laws against murder, right? Right, and, but that and, doesn't and, stop people from murdering. That doesn't right. stop people from murdering, and it exactly. doesn't stop it. It, it doesn't uh, stop bizarre cases from arising about like right. did the person. And sometimes those things are funny. Like I have friends who are murder uh, um, uh, defense attorneys, mm-hmm. uh, and um, I don't have any friends who are, who are prosecutors. I wonder why that is, but. <laughs> Um, no, I, <laughs> maybe my opinions on prosecutors, but like, so I have, I have, I have friends who are public defenders of people who are like, you know, who are accused of murder and like, they're full of jokes about murder and about like these ridiculous situations and, um, uh, cases where the person gets railroaded or whatever. And so, I mean, even if, even if the law should exist, even if you think someone's a good politician, they will do things that are ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and the nature just, of it, being a human in it's the nature of being human is the hair. It's inherent in trying to exercise power over, uh, other humans mm-hmm. who are slip who are slippery. You're right. There has been, and I think this came as a response to the daily show. Um, people looked at it immediately as, okay, well, they're just in the tank for people on the left. And then Obama gets in office and they make jokes about Democrats too. You know, right. <laughs> like they, but people, people kind of learn the wrong thing from some of the political comics out there because they did look at it as, Oh, you're making fun of this person. That must mean that you are for this other person or vice versa. And And, and it it, it is true that like people's, people's political opinions come out um, in their, um, in their thing. I'm not saying that like uh, comedians are anarchists. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think that I think that comedy itself is inherently anarchist. So like, mm-hmm. um, so like, be, 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 like because it always undermines people who are trying to exercise power. Right. Um, yeah. And but, but you can prefer you know different di- different politicians. Um, but but I think where it becomes a danger is when you start seeing yourself as okay. My job is to make jokes that uh, that destroy the other side right so exactly. i'm this i'm the mascot i'm the i'm the silly mascot who is you know trying to make my side laugh my side get you know get good to mm-hmm. make my team win um, i would 100 percent agree yeah it's like someone saying i'm a democrat comedian right, where i only right. i i'm at the behest of democrats and i right. am a tool of the democrats to, and right. that's I'm what my tool, comedy yeah. is for and that's right. that sort of stuff gets old real quick for me yeah and i think if you try to do that i mean i think even um so like uh i think that i i think it really takes a lot of effort to try and do that Mm -hmm. um because if if you are a trained comedian like if you are good at making jokes then uh you know you can be like a solid like sarah silverman right Mm -hmm. so like she spoke at the DNC. Um, and so she's like the closest thing I could think of to like a Democrat comedian. since so she was like officially invited to do that. Um, but like she can't help but see the ridiculousness of like the DNC. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's something that would just naturally appear to her. I mean, comedians are not blind to, uh, to that. And so I think right. like if, if, if you try to, censor yourself um and you know be a tool of whatever people agree with um or be a tool of the side then you're gonna make your life miserable because you're i mean you can't help but see it yeah um it's hard to not take the serious stuff seriously you know like a comic inherently is is just kind of looking at whatever people are taking too seriously whether it's themselves or the control that they want to have and comics make fun of that stuff that's the whole point right so when you start becoming a tool of that someone trying to control somebody else it's it just doesn't work yeah and and i and i guess there's a there's a danger um 
like I mean, I'm I'm thinking of the of the Jimmy Fallon thing where Jimmy I mean, and, and and Jimmy Fallon is a clown, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean like right, he's, that's his, that's his, his character. thing is his goofing around, comedy. right? It's escapism right. comedy, right? Um, and but I love and him. everyone I loved one of my favorites. Everyone yeah. loved it. Yeah, I I think he's I think he's funny. Um, yeah. I think he's del- he's 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 a, a delightful person. Mm-hmm. Um, and he brings people on there to uh to mess with them and to to sort of break from. Like they're like, so Ryan Gosling goes on there and like, instead of talking about, you know, movies, they, you know, they have a, a, a lip sync battle or whatever. Right. And, um, it's, it's fun. And then he had Donald Trump on there. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, he messed with his hair and, uh, what, you know, applied the same thing to Donald Trump and everyone got really upset. Mm-hmm. Um, they got, they got really upset because they saw him as, um, a, and I think this is a true criticism of liberal comedians mm-hmm. as sort of court gestures for American empire. So like they mm-hmm. see themselves as serving a function, um, and normalizing just like cozying up to power. Right. right. Um, and when he had Hillary on after that and was yeah. truly fawning over her. Yeah. Yeah. And saying it's, it means so much to me. I have two daughters and, you know, uh, yeah. you know, you might be the next president, and that's a big right. deal for me. You know, like he genuinely liked her. Yeah, right. And I think what? I think Jimmy Fallon just genuinely likes everybody. Um, <laughs> I, think I think he just I don't know if he's met someone he didn't like. Um, but but people were really really upset at at him for that because because like, he wasn't punching up. He wasn't punching up, and he doesn't um, do that. Right, he doesn't do that because, and uh, so I don't know what to make of that because I'm the type of person who, you know, if I had a chance to interview Donald Trump on national television, I would not be nice. Um, I would, but uh, or I, I would try to expose the ridiculousness of him trying to exercise power in general, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I, I I wouldn't try to, I guess, make him. Uh, sympathetic um in in that sense um but i so but so i'm torn about 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 that and about yeah i mean um, i certainly don't like trump and i i would have too wanted to have said hey what's this all about about a couple of things but i'm more like a as much as i want to be like a stephen colbert or seth myers i'm more like a jimmy fallon yeah right right and uh you know and conan o'brien too he's someone who he doesn't do comedy like that. Right. So he just doesn't have the guest on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, he had sure, when fine. he had, but when he had to host the Tonight Show, he had to have Sarah Palin on, and that's yeah. one of the other things people didn't understand is like, hey, it's the Tonight Show. The network's right. going to make you do certain things, mm-hmm. and you can't uh, you yeah. can't avoid it. And so, right. you know, at, at twelve thirty, you can say I'm not going to have Trump on like Seth Meyers did. Yeah. But uh, then, you know, but he did have Kellyanne Conway on mm-hmm. and he and he had a legit conversation with her and tried to take her to task on things because that's what he does. Right. But it is it was sort of like one thing that I heard that I actually appreciated that was someone who didn't like that Trump was on um, because most of the things I heard were pretty over the top. But it was an executive mm-hmm. producer for Samantha Bee's show. And there's and she said it just felt like a punch in the gut because here's a guy that we like, Jimmy Fallon. Who mm-hmm. is, um, who who's talking to this demagogue, and so yeah. it there's this sort of like subconscious sort of oh am I supposed to like him now? Right. And right. I think that's what we recognize. That's what we're recognizing is like I'm torn and I don't know how to feel about that. It's that part of oh wait a minute, you know, uh, am I supposed to like him? But I think one of the big problems, and this goes beyond comedy, but the way people who were anti-Trump. Uh, discussed him. It's just talking, uh, calling him the devil and calling him yeah, yeah. Hitler, you know, and it's mm-hmm. like, listen, guys, you're going to get a lot more traction if you call him Nixon or Andrew Jackson. Yeah, right. That's true. You know, yeah. Don't treat him like he is not a human. And I think that was the mm-hmm. problem that liberal comics ended up having and, and are not at all acknowledging mm-hmm. about the Trump Fallon thing, because they want to look at him as a villain a mm-hmm. a, a non-human type of right well i think that's villain it's, it's comforting to see him 
as a as a cartoon villain because right. then the problem isn't uh the power mm-hmm. it's the person right so mm-hmm. like um and if you give anyone that much power and uh they're going to be ridiculous mm-hmm. right that they're going to um try to exercise it i mean like um like i thought that obamacare was uh a similar kind of um uh, sort of ridiculous, which is not to say that I prefer X, right? right. It's just to say like the X, like the, the trying to create a healthcare system for the entire country, mm-hmm. um, in a way that doesn't break anything is sort of inherently ridiculous. And so like, well, we'll make this law, but like this law won't work unless we also have this and this won't work unless we also have this mm-hmm. and this won't work unless we also have this. And so it became this like whack-a-mole thing where like suddenly like people are getting like fined for not having health insurance and like, it's right. just very bizarre sort of thing and like that's inherently ridiculous like you know you can you could say it's good but like that doesn't pe- people will still have troubles with it right yeah. um yeah yeah i and, mean that's the thing i i was kind of like when he and hillary were running in 08 i said ah, i don't i don't want to have to pay for it because what if yeah, i don't right. have the money you know yeah right. you know i i if, if someone's on hard times i totally get not wanting to have to pay for that and not yeah, wanting to get fined either. If, if I had the money, I would. If I had the money, I would. I would. I would have health insurance. Like, right, and we can't. <laughs> if I had money to pay the fine, then yeah. Right. So, so e- even if you support the law, that is sort of you know inherently funny. Mm-hmm. Um, but like the the problem is the amount of power that um, uh, that that the people have, and so by treating Trump as and I think Trump is insane. I think he's um, a demagogue, yeah. But and I think, demagogue but, sounds like a word. It's not, like you call someone a demagogue and it sounds like you're calling them Hitler or something that's not tangible. Yeah. And, well, it's and, sort of, it's, it sort of sounds like demigod. Yeah, exactly. Like, and that's like, so it doesn't, it, it, you know, the word it's itself. Got, it's, it's, too, it's too close to. Exactly. You know, but Hercules, when whatever. you look at the definition, I was like, oh, no, he totally is. a dem- He's literally yeah, right. a demagogue. Uh-huh, <laughs> you know? right. So that word works, but it just, yeah. you know, the sound of it doesn't work as well. But, um, you and know, even like calling him uh, like a fascist or, you know, all these sorts yeah. of things. It's like, well, you can make a case. And I, I've, I've read cases for like why it's fascism, but it's sort of it's, it's it, like it sort of makes it sound like, well, the only way that he could be bad is mm-hmm. if he was a fascist. Right. Mm-hmm. So like, uh so in, instead of like he and fascists are bad for the same reason, mm-hmm. um, and I think it's sort of uh, it 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 it's the reason why they do that and the reason why they attack the person mm-hmm. um, is uh, so they can so we can all relax and you know pretend that we haven't been living under this like sword like just hang, the sword of Damocles hanging over our heads the whole time right. like. We have so many laws in the books that if any, uh, like, like the, and they're already on the books. You wouldn't even have to pass any laws. Like, if a president decided to enforce all of them, mm-hmm. we would be we would immediately go into Mad Max. Like, it would immediately be like <laughs> be like not Mad Max, but like, uh, you know, it would immediately be like police state, like mm-hmm. way more than it currently is, mm-hmm. right? So like, um, every time you get caught speeding, they they take away your driver's license, right? Like every like they can do that. Um, every time, every single person who's ever smoked pot, go to prison, mandatory, you know, minimum time. So like Mm -hmm. if they enforce all the laws, like if you cheat on your income taxes, like a fourth, like a fourth of Americans, like, uh, don't do the right deductions on their income taxes. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, find them all, put them in jail. Right. (laughs) If if you were to do all of that, and those are laws that are currently on the books. If you were to do all of that, we'd be all of the, so it's just sort of waiting there. Right. Yeah. For anyone, and it has been waiting there for a very long time for just anyone to pick it up. Like, right? Um, you know, I, I hope that Trump loses in terms of his immigration ban and his immigration policies. Mm-hmm. I hope that the courts keep striking it down. But uh, you know, I, I don't necessarily. On the other hand, I'm like, well, the president does have a lot of power to restrict immigration, and mm-hmm. so he could just do all that. Like, there's a lot of stuff that he could do that would just like, you know. Um, that would ruin a lot of people's lives, mm-hmm. and he's always and the, the, the presidents have always had those those power, and so you can't have this like this this system where, well, it only works if we get the right person in there who's like a philosopher king, you know, mm-hmm. and and once they get in there, it's like, well, uh, you know, we have an army of flying death robots, and mm-hmm. we just need to get the right person in there to like, well, no, why do you have an army of that? So right, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, so like I, what's I the, that, what are the right the checks and balances we need? Yeah, so like, I think the kind of humor that is aimed at the person, mm-hmm. uh, and they're like, how dare you, how, how, how dare Jimmy Fallon mess up uh, Trump's hair? Um, but then the next week, he, he has Hillary on, he fawns all over her. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, they're both going to be inhabiting the same monstrous office. Um, like they're, 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 they're about to like jump into the Mecca that like can destroy the world. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. I I don't, I don't. Right. Right. How do we, and it's sometimes it is, I guess that's where it comes to everybody who does comedy has a place and, Mm -hmm. you know, some people, I mean, I'm whatever, punch up not down comics who were Mm -hmm. railing against uh fallon Mm -hmm. they didn't hurt trump's getting elected any more than fallon or snl helped him get elected right they didn't yeah but you know the right kind of knowledge is what needs to get out there and so i always have a problem when i hear comics utilize their humor to say something that's false Mm -hmm. and that's something that one of the things I appreciate about you is that I don't see a lot of that from you. What I see is, uh, uh, no, that's uh, like, an honest, truthful take of the situation. Mm-hmm. It's just the, this, it, because it doesn't get too emotional about it. It gets that's to the fair. variables of it. So, so like, what's a, what, like, what's an example of like a joke that would be false to you? There's just a lot of stuff that you see on Twitter sometimes. Mm-hmm. And the sort of take back that they have of a situation is like, well, that's not quite what they said. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Um, or So, like, the premise is false. The premise like, is like, false. Like, like whether like they're talking about joke. Trump support, like, like if, if anyone made a joke about all Trump supporters are racist, well, yeah. they're definitely racist who are Trump supporters, but not all of them right. are racist. Trying yeah, to... that was that was my joke that, like, like I, 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 I do sometimes during this, you know, when I just stand up that, like, I stop and I say, like, just to make it clear, I don't think that supporting Donald Trump makes you racist, okay? Right. I don't. I don't think that. I think it's a lot more likely that you were already racist, and that's why you support Donald Trump. Like, I mean, and and you know, it's it's an issue of causation. You have to, and yeah. like that's that's just a flip of language. But like, yeah. Um, but, but but yeah, there is that. Uh, I, I do hear it is it is kind of funny when you um, when you have a premise, like when the joke is built on a premise that's not true, right? Um, and. Uh, whether, yeah. it's a, whether it's a co- political joke or not, you know, if, yeah. if the joke is just, man, women be shopping, it's kind of like, well, what? Yeah, <laughs> like, right. That's so hack. And, well, and also, how true is that? <laughs> yeah, right. Like, like, I mean, people talk about the, um, uh, the offensiveness of, um, um, of of jokes you know and like Mm -hmm. you know is is a joke offensive or not Mm -hmm. and the um and is it wrong is it therefore wrong and for me it's like well offensive jokes can be wrong but they're not wrong because they're offensive right they're wrong for other reasons and you you need to start developing a moral vocabulary to describe why something's wrong right Uh, and, and one reason they could be wrong is because they're a lie like, right. you know, like racist jokes that are built on um, like false stereotypes. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Not tr- not true stereotypes, because there's a lot of stereotypes that are like dead on. And that's really funny. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, like and I even I even posted a thing that was like, you know, the best thing about interacting with the culture is replacing all of your um, outdated, like offensive, uh, inaccurate stereotypes of that culture mm-hmm. with with accurate ones mm-hmm. uh, because like there's <laughs> like every culture has, ha, every, every, every culture has these things. But if they're, if they're based on a lie, then, then um, right. like that, that's wrong. It's wrong to lie about other cultures. Exactly. Um, yeah. Like it's immoral to lie about other cultures. And so, and then, but, but people don't, people can't name lies. Um, Cause I think we, we've sort of lost a lot of that moral vocabulary um, it, you know, as, as, as a culture. So, in, so instead we're like, that's offensive to yeah. a group of people. Right. And that's, that's, uh, spun the discussion into some sort of weird, uh, you can't say anything and PC and, yeah. uh, there's so much to say about that. But one aspect of that discussion is, well, 
when somebody says, hey, this joke isn't good, they're not offended because you chose to talk about the topic so much as right. you were wrong in how you described the topic. I mean, that's the issue. It's not, yeah, right. It's not they're, about they're calling being, you a liar, right? right. Like, they're, 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 like, let's say you tell a joke about, um, like, I, I hear a lot of hat comics, and they'll, they'll do a joke about, um, uh, that's like, you know, like transphobic. Mm -hmm. And it's always a joke about like hooking up with someone and finding out they were a man. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, that's a really common, you you hear hack comics do that. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that is like, and like the, like the trans people that I know, uh, may be like really offended by those jokes. And, but it wouldn't be like, because the, like there's a character in the story that's trans. Mm -hmm. It would be because like you are lying about, about them as a people you know, like accusing them of being, you know, dishonest or, um, or whatever. And, uh, you've, you've made all the people in the audience who are trans or whatever, you've made them feel lonely, mm -hmm. right? You've, you've, you've made them feel like you don't understand them. Um, and so I think that the, the, the problem, uh, with the punch up, punch down offensiveness debate is mm -hmm. that that is crowding out, um, uh, all these moral questions that we should have about comedy that are much more interesting Right. Like, like, how do you do comedy in a way that makes people feel less lonely or uh, less arrogant? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, like, uh, or how do you do it in a way that uh, gives people hope that like makes them love the people next to them? Like, you know, mm -hmm. that's that's much more interesting to me. Like, oh, I, I, I saw your show. And then at the end of it, I, 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 I hated a group of the population more than <laughs> when I when, then I went in like that's awful like that's a terrible thing to say about yeah. someone's comedy uh -huh. um and uh but for some reason like saying that a comedian is offensive or problematic is somehow worse than that mm -hmm. like no like um that's that's much worse so yeah that's a, that's a very good discussion uh I do want to pivot into talking about how you navigate things online because mm -hmm. uh there are two aspects of that that I want to talk about one is engaging with the arguments that happen. I am not one who really, in, who I can't really handle the, uh, once there are people getting angry and yelling and yeah. of course it's online. So it just seems like it, right. just, once people get aggressive online, I just, I don't want any of it. Um, you yeah, manage so, so that sometimes, well. Sometimes like I, I, I wonder, I wonder if they're actually angry, like, mm. cause maybe they're, they're just, sipping tea and just like really just you know just <laughs> and relax. sometimes they are yeah and it's just the tone that you read it in but or uh, or, yeah. or or maybe they're drunk and they're and they're trying to argue like you <laughs> yeah. that's one thing i always think about is like um you know i don't drink anymore but like you know when i did like uh i would i would sometimes get get drunk and then like argue with people online and i'm like and now i'm like man like are the people that i argue with are they you know <laughs> are they drunk like you have no way of knowing. And and there's no way I would argue with a drunk person in real life who was like trying to talk about foreign policy, right? So like why am I doing it online, right? Like right. if someone at a, at a bar was like, You don't even know about about the 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 Syria, you don't even and like there's no way I would argue with that person. But right. if they're if they're on Facebook, I'm like, All right, I'm on board, let's let's talk about this. So um so yeah, so I, I try to and if if I know them, then I'll engage. Right. Um, and yeah, but, I got a lot of heat recently because I said on my page that if I don't know someone, and they, especially if we're talking politics, and they say something to me, I, I don't talk to. I don't talk to strangers. Yeah. Uh, on a friend's page about topics. Yeah, uh, talking with strangers to get heated. I got a lot yeah. of heat for that, and I didn't enjoy taking the heat, but. You know, I just don't have right. a ton of confidence. <laughs> and that's yeah, why I mean, I like, so if it's like on my comedy page, where like I don't, I don't know the people who are. I mean, you, if if you have a page, you can click their profile and see, like, um, you know, are they uh, like an immigration lawyer? And like, if if they are, then like, oh, I'll listen to them, whatever. But like, any any time that happens, like, um, I I just want to hear, I just want to hear more. You know, mm -hmm. like I just want to. And and you and you can never go wrong. Like Vince, Vince Fabro, who is a comic we both know, mm -hmm. like he's really good at at just being like, "Hey, yeah, tell me more about that," mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> yeah. And like, and people people love it. They love to, they love telling them about uh, 
about. And so that's, that's how, like, that's how I use that is, you know, is just to learn more. Mm-hmm. Um, if I know the person, then I'll argue, then mm-hmm. I'll, um, um, or if, if someone says something that brings up like a general point that I would like to make, um, then I'll make that point. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and, you know, sort of st- stake my, like put a flag in the ground as far as, you know, this is a thing that I believe. Um, but because it's happening in public, um, like it's just not, uh, I mean, so like you and I are talking now, Mm -hmm. right. Um, we're friends and I'm talking to you over the internet. Mm -hmm. Um, however, this is also being recorded. So I'm aware that other people are going to be listening to this. I'm aware that like, if I share this on my Facebook page, other the people who are fans of mine are going to see it. Mm -hmm. And so like, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that. And, um, so I, I, you know, you lose a little bit of that, of that, like, you know, uh, us talking and I'm like trying to like be genuine and talk to you. Mm -hmm. Um, on Facebook, it's the same thing where like, you're, you're talking with someone online, but you're not really talking to them. You're talking to everyone who's watching. Yeah. And, and, um, uh, like, let's say you're in the middle of an argument and they prove you wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, and which happens, like, I mean, I'm wrong all the time. Like I've said things that like people are like, um, no. And they, (laughs) like, I've, I've said things about, like, uh, um, politics or about economics or whatever. And like a professor of economics will correct me. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and, um, uh, and part of me is like, Oh, like if I, if I admit that I'm wrong, (laughs) then, but actually if you admit you're wrong, no one cares. Yeah. And you actually gain credibility when you You can say that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, um, and there's, there's nothing more ridiculous than watching someone get proved wrong online and then they keep, (laughs) They keep, we keep trying uh, to fight that argument. Trying to trying to get a win in there, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, it was being, no different than like you, people online. would say. Uh, this was before the internet when people were at parties and they would say something that had no corroboration whatsoever, and people were like, "No, I don't think that's true." And then they would just start making up. Well, I read it in a yeah, Time right. magazine. It was like, "Yeah, who wrote that? What was the title? Yeah. I want to read it." And they would <laughs> make up stuff off the top yeah. of their head. Right. Yeah, do so, online now because people can find some sort of confirmation bias article. So, so, so it's good to, um, as much as you can, uh, let people save face. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like that's pretty much the only way to, and like I, I, I think you sort of naturally do that when you're talking with someone in person. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Like I think people just sort of naturally. Uh, are like, well, I don't think you mean to say that. I think, like, you know, I think we both agree that blah blah blah. And like, that's mm-hmm. something they sort of naturally do um, in person. But on, but on Facebook or whatever, you're like, I'm gonna destroy this person, <laughs> and then, uh, and then they're gonna feel really bad. And then uh, that's, and then it's like, okay, um, if you if you if you put them in a corner with no way out, then then they're gonna fight, mm-hmm. um, and they're gonna. Um, uh, they're like, and they're just going to be desperate and it's going to get ridiculous really fast. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's also so, so much of an assumption that people are angry and looking for a fight sometimes when someone's just sharing an opinion. Like when right. I said, Hey, I just don't talk to strangers because it just has gone badly. So I just don't. Yeah. And you have no it. idea. You have no idea where the other person's coming from. Like, right. especially, um, you know, you have no idea that, um, you know, what their story is and whether they, um, and, 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 and they could still be wrong. Yeah. Um, but like I have a lot of fans on my comedy page who are from like overseas or who have family who are overseas who are like legitimate, like, and it's, it's, it's become like a very predictable thing where like, let's say there's like a, a big story where like there's a terrorist attack in Belgium, you know, mm-hmm. or something like that. And like, uh, it's a big breaking news story. I'll share it. Right. I know within like 10 minutes, I'm going to have a comment from somebody like who was next door. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right. And, uh, and it's true. They, they yeah. were next door and it's a, it's a, you, you know, got a lot of international attention. Yeah. And, and things go viral fast and like mm-hmm. it, it attracts that sort of thing. And so one thing that I've become aware of is like, Oh, when I make jokes about this kind of stuff, when I talk about this kind of stuff, um, people who are directly affected by this kind of stuff uh, can hear me. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's very different than like doing a open mic in Charleston, South Carolina, talking about drones 
you know, it's like, it's very different when like somebody is, is talking with you online Mm -hmm. and like they're they're like, you know, their dad was killed by, uh, like I remember I was in, um, uh, I was in, um, Manitoba. I was, I was, I was in, I was in Winnipeg, um, in Canada and I was doing a, a show and afterwards I was talking to this girl about, um, the war in Iraq and, um, mm-hmm. and I, I was being, you know, I, I, I know about it and I was talking about the war in Iraq and I was, you know, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And she was like, Oh yeah, well like I'm, I'm Iraqi and my, and my dad got killed by an American sniper. And, um, and then I spent, you know, years in a, um, in a refugee camp and I was like, Oh, like mm-hmm. now, okay, I, I am going to shut up forever mm-hmm. and like just listen to you. Cause like, I, I see the floor, like, uh-huh. you know, like when I was, when I was, uh, 18, I protested the war in Iraq and that's it. You know, <laughs> it's, I, I don't have any, so, um, you, you don't know where the other person is coming from. Um, and, and, and that's true, like not just with international people or if, you know, but whatever it's like, you know, when you talk about healthcare, or you joke about Obamacare, you may be talking with someone who, um, like, uh, got fired, um, or not fired, but you, you, you may talk with someone who lost their health insurance, mm-hmm. um, and like, or, or someone who like, like because of Obamacare, they are alive, mm-hmm. um, today, or you may be talking with somebody who like got fired because like the, uh, the, the, like their employer couldn't, couldn't pay the what, whatever. And they blame Obamacare for them losing their jobs. Right. Um, so you have no idea. Um, and, uh, so I think realizing that, and that just sort of comes with experience and, um, you know, being humiliated a few times <laughs> by, by joking about something and the person, you know, that you're talking to, but, 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 but I think that makes your jokes better. I think it makes your material yeah. better. If, uh, if you're aware, um, uh, of that and if, yeah. if, if it's not, if it's not like based in a kind of ignorance. Absolutely. Totally agree. I think another thing, the other aspect that I wanted to talk to you about how you navigate online and I could be totally wrong about this, but from what I observed, which I wasn't following it every day, but it appeared that, uh, you blew up not overnight, but it seemed like it happened pretty quickly over the course of a couple of weeks all of a sudden you had uh, like thousands and thousands of yeah so it happened right so that would have been like about a year and a half ago right um uh or no maybe it was like a year it was like last january Mm -hmm. um and and yeah so you know i ran for mayor of charleston as Mm -hmm. you know and (laughs) uh and uh, I had my McClellan for Mayor page, and I had a bunch of ridiculous stuff on there, and that mm-hmm. got like a thousand likes or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then after the election, where I unfairly lost, um, <laughs> uh, after that election, um, I I turned that into my you know my Jeremy McClellan comedy, so my just my professional page. Mm-hmm. And um, then I started posting stuff, and the stuff just started going really viral. And mm-hmm. um, I had some like some. I guess famous people retweet some stuff or not like not retweet, but share some stuff. And, Mm -hmm. uh, and that sort of blew up. I had some, um, I had some like famous, uh, like, you know, famous Muslim scholars, like, Mm -hmm. uh, this guy, like this guy, Yasir Qadi, Mm -hmm. he, he shared, uh, my page and told everybody to like it. And that Mm -hmm. was like a big boom like that. Like I gained like 10,000, like I gained, I gained 10,000 in like a day. Um, and, uh, but there's there, there, there's been a bunch of stuff like that, and like you don't know, like there's different ways of, um, like comedians talk about like finding your voice and mm-hmm. um, how to, um, but but I'm I'm a big fan of just like putting as much stuff out there as possible, yeah, and then seeing, paying attention to what people like, paying attention mm-hmm. to what people value, mm-hmm. um, because what people value will be like the stuff that they don't get elsewhere, mm-hmm. um. And that's and, not very different than on stage. Like you don't right. keep telling a joke that everyone boos <laughs> or, right, or at right, least right. has zero reaction to. You tell the jokes that keep getting big laughs. Yeah, and 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 there's always going to be like a a a, a tension between like the stuff you really want to say mm-hmm. and the stuff that you think is really really funny, and then like the stuff that you just know you can press some buttons and make the and make the audience laugh. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's always going to be that that sort of tension. But the stuff that like people really value, the stuff that like, why is this person your fan? Not necessarily like why do they laugh at you um, in person, 
Mm-hmm. Um, but like, why do they go to you? Um, and it could be for any number of reasons, right? It could be, uh, that, um, like it, it, it could be that you are like extremely funny, right? That you're the, mm-hmm. the funniest person in the world and that's why they, they latch onto you. Uh, it could be that, um, they feel, uh, lonely in, um, you know, like, or, 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 or mistreated. And it's nice to have someone, uh, who is trying to understand them. Um, it could be that like that you're interesting, right? That you have mm-hmm. an interesting background and you have an interesting collection of ideas in your head. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that is kind of, uh, um, I, I think that, yeah, I mean, you, you, you don't, and, and, and maybe you never figure it out. I mean, like it's, yeah. it's hard to figure out exactly why, um, like what is the, what is the thing that right. is making you, um, uh, and you, you don't know necessarily. Yeah. Yeah, that is the the quest of a comic. It's finding their voice and finding how they connect to their audience. Yeah, and duplicating that. Uh, mm-hmm. What's what the success you had with your page has made happen for you? Or great gigs, like you mentioned earlier, that you got to uh, leave your day job and right. you can work full time as a comic. That's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. Yeah. Thanks. And uh, you've been doing that for like a year now, right? About mm-hmm. a year. Yeah. So a year in May. So it was it was it was, it was May first. Awesome. And so I re- I retired the same day my dad did. <laughs> so my dad retired, and I also quit my job and do stand up comedy. So. <laughs> and you have also gotten a couple of big gigs out of that. Several mm-hmm. big gigs, and recently you hosted a big event for like a the conservative. Uh, you... No, it was the oh no 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 but not conservative. It was uh, the trigger. Yeah, it was uh, it was the International Students for Liberty conference. Correct. Um, so, uh, yeah. yeah, I hosted that, and uh, that was interesting. Yeah, because you took a couple of jokes, uh, took, a, took a couple, made a couple of jokes at the expense of Rand Paul, which right. got so, you a lot of got attention. me a lot of hate. Yeah, well, it got me a lot of Both love. Sides, it got me a yeah, lot of hate. Exactly, and uh, yeah. well, that's what. So you know, Rand is uh, he is a conservative. He is um, hardly. Uh, but he he supported the immigration ban Mm -hmm. and he supported and 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 not just because he's a republican and he was going along with trump but he wrote uh even more strict you know immigration bans while he was you know a senator Mm -hmm. and um to ban even more even more countries right so like 32 countries instead of eight Mm -hmm. and so he was really gung-ho about that and that and, and that and then including his support of sessions um, got him the hate of a lot of, a lot of libertarians. Um, and so, uh, I was hosting this and Rand Paul was going to speak. Um, and, uh, also going to speak is a guy, um, named, uh, um, Amir, um, Amir Nasser, Mm -hmm. who is a, who is a refugee Mm -hmm. from, uh, from, uh, the Sudan. Mm -hmm. And, um, who was supposed to speak, but who can't, who couldn't come because of the refugee because ban. Because of the ban, right. So you have this weird situation where I'm the host and Rand mm-hmm. Paul is speaking and then me, and then I introduce Amir Nasser who is banned because of Ram, something that Rand Paul believes in. So like, that is so ridiculous. Yeah. Like it's so, it's such a ridiculous scenario that like, I feel like I would be punished by like the patron saint of comedy, right? Like right. St. Genesius. Right? Oh, great. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, yeah. I, w- I would so Saint Genesius would come down and like mur- you know <laughs> kill me if I if I didn't uh, say do, do you do you know the story of Saint Genesius? I don't. So Saint Genesius is the patron saint of comedy, mm-hmm. and uh, he was uh, a sketch. He was doing sketches right mm-hmm. like uh, for the emperor for Emperor Diocletian, making fun of Christianity, which was being eradicated or whatever. Mm-hmm. And in the middle of the sketch, he gets like fake baptized. Mm-hmm. and it works like it he becomes a christian on stage and uh then uh refuses to continue doing the thing and then the emperor kills him oh wow. so like he is so it's funny for two things one is like he literally got murdered for like insulting the room mm-hmm. which is something that like <laughs> like that is so like perfect for a comedian right, to, yeah. worry, to worry about um but also <laughs> it was like his first time 
uh, he, he, they, his first good show, he, he quit, um, <laughs> which is also perfect. Um, so anyway, I feel like, like, okay, well, okay. I have to follow the, the, that model of insulting the emperor. And, um, so, uh, I, I insult Rand Paul. I, I tell three jokes that are against him mm-hmm. and, you know, that, that make fun of him for his support of the refugee band. Yeah, they were hilarious jokes. Yeah, they're good. And like the audience loved it and everyone yeah. laughed and stuff. And, um, and then, uh, <laughs> um, and the then I had, online started, people started tweeting and yeah, well, because they wanted, um, like it's, it, it goes back to what we were saying is they wanted, uh, the comedy to be put in service of their cause. Right. Yes. And, and this is true whether the cause is in power or not. Mm-hmm. So like, uh, if it's in power, then like they want you to support their guy and what he's doing. If you're out of power, then any joke about uh, the leaders of your resistance is uh, is itself like you know you're ruining it, right? Mm-hmm. You're ruining the chances of us. Mm-hmm. Like by making this joke, you're you know um, like Rand Paul's the most libertarian person we have. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> and like you're ruining you're ruining it by I'm like he's supporting banning people, human beings. Uh, innocent human beings from coming into the country when they are properly vetted, like you know, it's it's insane. So, mm-hmm. um, so, uh, but that was great. I loved I loved doing that. Um, that was great. And then with the attention you were getting online, it seemed like the way you handled it in stride was to point out the ridiculousness of that situation. Right. Like it's it's such an insane thing to expect me not to say something right like if you if you zoom out and you know me like uh right. what were you thinking like, it's like when stephen you, colbert was at the uh the white house uh press conference yeah, for, dinner, for dinner. Bush. right and people are yeah, like, like how dare he and it's like have you paid any attention to what right. he does <laughs> yeah how the hell would i not like i mean one of the speakers is responsible for banning like uh, a muslim <laughs> speaker yeah. So like how like I don't know. So it, it was just funny in a sense of of uh, um, but yeah. I mean, it got me and you know I, like the people who got mad at me um, didn't like me anyway. Right, right. right. You didn't so, lose anybody. The only thing right. could have been that you gained a bunch of people. Yeah. So it's uh, and and it was fun. Yeah, it was fun, and you handled it in a really fun way too. I really enjoyed uh, seeing that from the outside. <laughs> yeah, was like, there was one really funny comment you made of like, "Oh yes, please keep sharing the video of me." Oh crushing. yeah, because because this guy, <laughs> this guy uh, Mitchell something, he was like, uh, he filmed it right, mm-hmm. and he was very angry uh, with me for this, and so he put that on YouTube as like, "Get a load of this guy, this awful guy." And it's a video of me crushing. Like it's a video of me doing really well, and and all the comments are like, I don't know what you're talking about. This is actually really funny, and oh like, I, and I'm and I'm like, no, please don't share that. Please keep sharing it. And uh, uh, he ended up deleting it from YouTube, yeah, like because I, I I think yeah. it got it got a bunch of positive. But I had already downloaded it, so I have it on my computer. Yeah, um, yeah. So oh gosh, people online. I mean. Well, this is, that's been a, a good full circle, I think, that we've come to here. Uh, so yep. now this is the portion of the show where we try to create something. Okay. Uh, we've talked a lot about things that maybe it's hard to come up with an idea of something to create. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, trying to develop. Uh, if someone was trying to, you're starting out in comedy, they, mm-hmm. uh, they, they have an idea of the things that they like to talk about. Yeah. Um, maybe they can get some help on how to focus that online yeah okay so um let's pick something let's uh let's say they like to talk about the hypocrisy of this is something i like that i i have had on my mind i haven't made any comedy out of it but it's something that i think about constantly and i want to make comedy out of it but Mm -hmm. just the hypocrisy of people who want to point out that maybe in religious culture uh, the how poorly people are treated from religious you know by mm-hmm. religious people as if only religious people treat people poorly and then people oh. from their world 
also do. Like, I guess a recent example might be uh, Jamie Kilstein. I don't know if you've heard anything about that, but he's talked a lot about being a male feminist and oh yes, he's a male the way, feminist, right? And anti the way men treat women, and then a bunch right. of women come out and say, "Hey, he's acted really strange with me and sexually yeah, harassed me." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, See, right? So, I mean, what's funny about that? So, like, I mean. If, 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 if you wanted to get at that idea, because that is like a, a core idea of like someone who is um, really like woke, right? Mm-hmm. Like someone who's like really um, uh, whatever. And they, yeah. um, uh, but they constantly are making um, uh, like, but, but their, their wokeness is a mask to, right. uh, to take advantage or whatever. Or they think that like they personally like, like because they're so woke, like because they're such that a they're feminist, they're able to do that. Yeah. They're able to do this, right? So like, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Like you know, ladies, like you know, and so that kind of. Uh, I mean, I think that would be really funny as like a character, um, mm-hmm. just like the the male feminist who's so ingratiating, but like also like definitely is just trying to, um, you know, get in your pants. Yeah, um, and I guess SNL just did a funny sketch about that. Um, uh, it was oh who hosted that episode i don't remember it's a recent sketch where uh guys were just coming up and speaking like oh i'm a male feminist i get it and then yeah the they got brushed off and then they're like mm-hmm. bitch oh yeah <laughs> right yeah yeah it, like, it goes angry. really fast like that yeah <laughs> absolutely um but so yeah i mean okay so you hmm so can um, that be like a Twitter account and you're, you're yeah, uh, male you're, feminist. Yeah. You could have a male feminist, uh, Twitter account, um, which, uh, um, uh, like whenever a, a woman says something like profound or mm-hmm. whatever, you could, you could chime in with, uh, um, with like an, like an, like an explanation for why what they said was profound. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 or like a really like, you know, you, you, you go girl, let me see, like, you know, can you, uh, PM me, right? Or like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like, uh, um, that, like that sort of thing. Um, or you could just, I, th- I think it would be funny. I mean, like, this is something that I would do is just like, um, uh, is just begin sentences with like as a male feminist <laughs> and then have it not even be relevant or right. like have it be, yeah. um, uh, it sounds like they know what they're talking about. Like as a like, what? What does that even mean? As a yeah, and then et cetera. Like that's that's something that um, mm-hmm. I think I think that would be funny. Yeah, um, that would be super funny. How would you advise a person to handle the people who don't get the joke, and they flame on about how like you know they think that the person's being serious or something like that? I would just heighten it. Just be like you know respond to them and be like, well, if you would understand it if you were if you were you know if if you were as feminist as me. <laughs> Like, you know, just like redo the, the thing and be like, look, like, and it, especially if it's a woman who gets mad and you'd be like, look, honey, like <laughs> it's, you may, you may not be as, a, you may not be as feminist as I am. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, that, that may be why you don't, you don't get it. Well, great. I, I think that, that there it is. That's, we got it. That's a really fun idea there and uh, a really great talk. So I appreciate having okay. you on. Yeah, it's fun. I thoroughly enjoyed that chat. I hope you did as well. I think it was one of the more thoughtful ones that we've done, just because Jeremy is such an intellect. He's also so mischievous. I think all of that works well for him in comedy, being really well-read and mischievous. That's going to help you go places. We'll see if he gets a there it is bump in where his career <laughs> leads after this. No, I'm kidding. He's, he's got a fun career ahead of him. We'll keep an eye out for him. If you want to keep an eye out for him, you can on Twitter at Jeremy McClellan and on Facebook at Jeremy McClellan Comedy. And you can follow us online as well on both Twitter and Facebook at There It Is Pod. And if you want to follow me, you can on Twitter at Jason Far Jokes. Well, that's another episode in the can to rip off Jimmy Crane. And until next time, be good to each other. The music for the theme song was created by Neil Brooks. The rap was written and performed by Nick Acevedo. The logo for There It Is was created by Jeff Prater. The There It Is podcast is produced by Jason Farr.